One of the most important parts of serving time in prison is maintaining strong family and community ties. And there are only a few ways that a person in federal prison can do that. My name is Michael Santos. I'm the founder of Prison Professors, and we provide a lot of information to help all justice-impacted people understand the journey ahead and what can they do to get the best possible outcomes. So if you're watching this on YouTube or iTunes, I hope that you will visit us at prisonprofessors.com to get the, the assets that you need so that you understand how to navigate your way through federal prison and how to get the best possible outcome, including you really want to understand the different ways that you communicate with people outside of prison. That would include the mail. That would include using the CoreLinks system, which is the digital email system. That would also include telephone, but I think for a lot of people, it also includes visiting. Now, the Bureau of Prisons is very strict about visiting. That's what we're going to be talking about on today's video. I'm going to share my screen and I'll provide it on the website itself, the link to this particular page where you can go to the Bureau of Prisons website and learn a little bit about general visiting information. It says to make sure that your visit will be a success by carefully following these four steps. Now, I was in prison for 26 years. I got married inside of a prison visiting room during my 16th year of imprisonment. And over the last 10 years of my sentence, I visited, I would say, 99% of the possible visiting days that I was uh, uh, allowed to visit. So I know that you could nurture a relationship while you're in prison, but you definitely need to arm yourself with the information. And of course, if you're new to this system, that means finding where the person is serving the sentence, going through the approval process, being prepared so that you understand the rules once you get there, and then planning your trip before you go there. Because as much as we'd like to say that the Bureau of Prisons is helpful, in, in all reality, the, the Bureau of Prisons is not particularly family friendly, at least it, it wasn't during the time that I served my sentence. And I was in prison from 1987 until I got released in 2013. But we are an advocacy group that works with justice impacted people. And we know that it's, it can be very frustrating. So we want you to be understand, to understand the system. Just make sure that you're that your loved one is in a specific institution before you make the effort to drive there. Prisons frequently are far away from where people live. And so you want to make sure that the person is there. And particularly now during these this era of the, the pandemic, um, I'm filming this in October of 2022, and we're still in this pandemic era where sometimes prisons close visiting. So you want to go to the prison's website and you want to make sure that visiting is authorized at the institution. Then if you're not an immediate family member, you want to make sure that you're on the individual's approved visiting list. Now on our website, you can see, and I'm going to switch to that page right there. You will see that we have a form um, uh, uh, on visiting on visiting, and you, you could access it if you just go to our resources tab right there, and you go to after sentencing, and you will see this article here on on visiting. And if you click the form, you can you could actually go to see what the form looks like. This is a tr an actual Bureau of Prisons visiting form, and you want to some some institutions they will require the person serving time to send the visiting form that belongs to that institution. And the way they can check on that is they may put the counselor's name up here in the top corner. And, you know, but, but I would recommend that you fill out this form in advance and you send this form to your loved ones who want to come and visit you. You have them prepare all of the information that's available here and uh, then they just, they should send it to the institution. So you might put, um, unit team for whatever the person's name is, and it gets there in advance. Or even just taking the proactive step of filling out this form before you surrender um, just gets it ready just to drop it into the mail um, as soon as as soon as you get there. So I wanted to, I was looking at other areas here on the website that I wanted to continue working through. Now. You'll see who can an inmate, they like to say inmates in federal prison. I like to call people people 
but you know, this is what it is. And in the system, they, they put on these um, labels. So who can, add, who can a person add to a visiting list? Well, they consider immediate family to be a priority. Those aren't my words. You could look at that in various BOP policy statements like this one right here, where it says members of the immediate family um, and other relatives and cousins will be considered first for visiting purposes. That's from, this is from a um, a A&O handbook, I think. I pulled this from Terminal Island because we have a friend who's going to go visit their family members in Terminal Island. And so I wanted her to see, hey, be aware of what the A&O handbook says. It says that, you know, you just scroll down here to the, to the, um, uh, what do you call it? The table of contents on visiting on page 44. I'm going to go to page 44, if I can, 44, go right there, and it'll say visiting. You'll read about when the hours are available for visiting. Again, this is as long as the institution is operating normally. Um, and then you're going to want to see here um, that visits. Now, these are called special visits will be granted, but members of the immediate family, it gives priority to. So if you know that information, you can use that to your advantage. Um, this is an important paragraph here that's on the BOP's website. Again, I will provide the link here. It says, in certain circumstances, such as when an inmate first enters prison or is transferred to a new prison, a visiting list might not exist. In this case, immediate family members who can be verified by the information contained in the inmate's pre-sentence report may be allowed to visit. However, if there is little or no information available about a person, visiting may be denied. You should always call the prison ahead of time to ensure that your, your visit will be permitted. Now, the problem with that is that even if you call the institution, sometimes the institution is, is, is just not friendly. And they will say, absolutely not. You can't come in here unless you're on the visiting list. But I can give you an example uh, of my personal experience. I was tr served time in many different prisons across the country because I was in for 26 years. And my wife, Carol, understood this policy. So when she called the prison, they told her, you can't visit. But she understood that she's if she's got documentation that she's my immediate family, they ha they their policy is to let the person in. So, but you've got to be firm when you get to the prison. If they say you're not on the visiting list, you've got to say, "I the policy states that I'm as an immediate family member I can visit." Um, please call the duty officer so that I can speak with the duty officer or the associate warden because. Typically, visiting is on weekends or holidays, and the executive staff isn't there. But at all times, 24 hours a day, the Bureau of Prisons has what's called a duty officer. That means that person is acting with authority over the institution. And, and so since you know this information, you want to be able to help um, yourself. You want to advocate for yourself when you're surrendering to the prison. You always want to be polite. You always want to be respectful, but you should also be prepared by bringing the rules. So my recommendation is that you would, you would scroll down to the bottom of our website at Prison Professors. You would make sure that you get the link to the Bureau of Prisons page because this is going to be digital. It's online. You won't be able to take your computer with you into the prison, but you want to print this page and you want to show it to the duty officer. You want to show it to the person sitting at the desk so that they will, will say, you know, this person knows what they're doing. I don't want this person writing a, an administrative report against me or reporting to the office of the inspector general or writing to the regional director and talking about how people are violating the rules of the Bureau of Prisons. So the Bureau of Prisons says it encourages family visits. Make sure that you go there prepared but you have to understand that sometimes staff members are a little bit harsh or even caustic and you simply just have to always be polite and say I'm respectful of your rules but this is my loved one I have to be here for that person I'm sure that you could respect that here is the policy statement here is something that you could use and if you do that you are going to add advance the possibility of getting your outcome what's your outcome it's to see your loved one in prison 
So my recommendation is that you're always courteous, you're always respectful, but you definitely arm yourself with understanding, particularly if you know that you're not on the visiting list. Now this, this guidance I am providing only applies to people who are immediate family members. And again, you can see who is an immediate family member or who does the Bureau of Prisons consider an immediate family member by scrolling down um, this section right here. And it says the immediate family is mother, father, step parents, foster parents, brothers and sisters, spouse and children. With regard to spouse, that includes common law wives if you're recognized in the pre-sentence investigation report as a common law um, person. With regard to children, it's a, a child who is under the age of 16 must have a parent or guardian approve their placement on the visiting list. But again, what you really want to make sure that you know is ideally you want to be on the visiting list, but if you're not on the visiting list, make sure that you're, that you're going to be recognized as an immediate family member. I would go there with the policy statement, with the pre-sentence investigation report, with the marriage license that shows this is who I am and we're married. Um, it shows here, I'm, that's me on the pre-sentence investigation report. And if you do that in a courteous way, I think you're going to get the outcome that you want. So I just wanted to publish this on the website in addition to the visiting form to try and help as many people as we can. That's what our team does at Prison Professors. And I hope that you will always be a member of our community. If it makes sense to you, sign up for our weekly webinars where we provide interactive one-on-one um, -on -one questions. I'm, my team's always available, but I'm, I'm really only available on those webinars for one-on-one -on -one interactions. We really believe in you. We're wishing you the best possible journey and experience because we want you to come back home with your dignity intact with uh, opportunities to restore your confidence and get back on your feet. And that, that really requires a person to understand how do they maintain strong family ties while they're in prison. I am Michael Santos with Prison Professors, and we believe in you. Thanks.